Sometimes you get a stage where you just can't tell how it'll pan out. And so it was on stage three of the Tour of Luxembourg. Well, for all the world, it looked like it would be one for the sprinters on the day. But a breakaway had other ideas on lumpy terrain with climbing yet again, exceeding 2,000 metres as a total. Likewise, it was to be a loop circuit at the end. And so familiar terrain with some drags along the way, including one up towards the finish. Well, it was a spirited breakaway that went up the road and uh, it was Dazal of Big Noel Powell's that was the first to be shaken out of the back of it. They'd had a margin of about three and a half minutes on the peloton and the fact that Ben O'Connor was in there and was virtual leader for much of the day meant there was a spirited chase by De Kernig Quickstep for Yao Almeida who still has designs on the title overall. He wearing the points jersey on the day with Mark Hershey the lead after yesterday's stage win. Yes, but a boys was one of those that seemed to be struggling as well for Lotta Sadal. So would indeed part of the chase be for Roger Kluger after Caleb Ewan decided not to start the day after two lacklustre days and a suspicion of illness. So would it be the sprinters teams that chased down or the GC men to make sure that Ben O'Connor didn't run away with this? In the end, it was a mixture of both. A sort of a half-hearted chase, really. And when we came to our final lap and 12.2 kilometres to go, the gap was still a healthy 50 seconds, but it started to be clawed back. Some of the sprinters' teams with Sport Vlaanderen, with Marit, their choice, were coming up. Decline for Rally Cycling also had some options. Edvard Bosenhagen, perhaps, for Total Energies, who'd been doing a lot of the chase. And then Jack Bauer just decided to release himself and bridge over. Well, that was a, a red flag to a bull, really, for those chasing behind. They decided to close that gap and in fact slowly but surely they wound back Jack Bauer and teams like Delco, like Kyle Rao thought, you know what, this could well turn out to be a sprint after all. Work was being done, Alpes and Fenix just uh, guarding if you like the fact that Valsleben would have been a favourite amongst the break. They were trying to destabilise and upset the chase. In the end the chase was to win. So who would it be that would come out of the pack and rise to the top? Anybody's guess? So many sprinting options, especially in the absence of Caleb Ewan. Brian Kokar appearing not to be functioning or firing on all cylinders. And so the last few hundred metres were to be a sad one for the break. It wasn't to be their day, but who then would come out of the pack? It was all a bit cagey out there. Penelava in the plum colours of Burgos BH had options. Likewise, Turgis perhaps for Total Energies. Finally, it was time to reach out for a little bit of glory and springing out of the center, a man who hasn't won for a long time. Sasha Modolo got his nose to the fore and held off the charging pack. Phenomenal effort by him. Cosnefoy, the nearest man to him for AG2R Citroën. And the emotions just poured out of the Italian. Victory for Modolo ahead of Cosnefoy. Grosso was there for Delco, Bosenhagen in the top five along with Vendram. So the breakaway didn't make it. Sasha Modolo did. And it was a very emotional man, acknowledging the gap that had been between his last win and this. Mark Hershey stays in the lead, but by a margin of just four seconds ahead of uh, Almeida. Godot at 19 seconds, Pino at 23. Dilla Cruz at the same margin. Time trialing to come tomorrow.